morning, good afternoon, or even good evening. My name is Dale McKay. I'm a senior technical marketing architect in the network and advanced security business group here at VMware. For about the next 10 to maybe 15 minutes, I'd like to take you through the next session in our series on the SaltStack product, in particular the SaltStack and Carbon Black Cloud integration. This particular video is Operations Part 2, and in this video we deal with compliance and remediation from a salt stack or automation perspective. This is one of a series of videos on the Carbon Black Cloud and salt stack integration. I would encourage you to first go and watch the integration video and then to watch the Operations Part 1 and then finally this video, Operations Part 2. Thank you for watching. We are continuing our series on integrating SaltStack with Carbon Black Cloud. In previous sessions, we had looked at how to determine or assess vulnerabilities and remediate them, and we saw that in action. This session, we want to focus on compliance. Within the SaltStack product, I have the ability to not only check my compliance or uh, determine what my exact compliance um, what it, my exact compliance is at any moment in time and we'll show you how we're going to go about doing this but also to be able to remediate those issues that come up as part of that compliance check so one of the first things that I want to show you is this win, this Clus Dash Win 10 uh, VM that we've been working with is a 32 bit VM that I have in my lab. We are going to continue working with that same VM, but in the case of SaltStack, what I've done is I've gone and created a separate target for that uh, 32 bit Windows 10 box, and you can see that it's reflected. Uh, right here, if, if we take a look at what creates that target, is OS version, and you can see the OS version there, and the CPU architecture of x86. So that's what's creating that target of Win 10 x86. All right. The first thing that we want to do when we start dealing with compliance is obviously we're going to go and create a policy. So let's do that, and we're going to call our policy something uh, catchy like win 10-x86, and we will pick that win 10x86 target. When I hit next, it's going to ask me to select the benchmark. Now, in this particular version of the product, these are CIS benchmarks, and as I scroll through these pages, you'll see that there's quite a few benchmarks. We're going to pick this Windows 10 1703 benchmark, this one right here. But I'll continue scrolling through, and you'll see that there's Windows servers, there's Red Hat Enterprise Linux, there's also SUSE Linux, Oracle Linux. Ubuntu, um, even some Stigs down here in the bottom for uh, Red Hat. So there's quite a few um, benchmarks that you can pick from is my point in scrolling through all those pages. In fact, there's 101 different benchmarks that we can select, including CentOS, Debian, and even some Docker benchmarks there. So we've selected our Windows 10 benchmark. And by the way, we're going to keep this example of how to work with compliance, both in terms of determining compliance and in terms of remediating it. We're going to keep it very simple. All right. So it's really just more to illustrate the automation capabilities than to necessarily be um, 
executing some very complex remediation scheme against uh, compliance. So, next thing that we want to uh, determine is what checks do we want to do as part of this compliance assessment. And for the purpose of this discussion, we're going to look at two checks. We're going to look for, is there a message text for users attempting to log on? And is there a message title for users that are attempting to log on? Now, that, that title is actually required in order for the text to be displayed. All right, let's uh, go on to our next step. And in the next step is where I can define what I am going to look for in terms of that login message and also the title. So here we're going to type in um, this platform is being used for salt stack testing. Let me just correct my spelling there. And down here we will put in for a title salt stack testing title. Again, I'll go back and correct my spelling. All right, so we finally got that in and we got it in there correctly. Let's move on. And I'm going to run this assessment when I click on save. And if you have viewed the earlier sessions, and if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and look at those earlier sessions. One of them deals with vulnerabilities, and one of them deals with just uh, general operations, integration, how you get uh, salt stack connected to the carbon black cloud, etc. But what you will notice is that I have the ability to do some scheduling of this particular assessment. We're not going to do that. We're just going to run this assessment. And you can see that my assessment run has started. And you can see that there's one minion that is reporting as unknown. Now, just like I've showed you in the past, we can go over to activity and we can look at our in progress jobs we can even click on the job ID here we can see that uh, we're running it against one minion that minion is a uh, cluster win 10 and of course that's that 32-bit um, uh, Windows 10 box that I mentioned a minute ago we'll just give this a couple minutes and we can go over and look and see if it has completed it has not now it has completed and we should see it right at the top of this list and sure enough we it's going against that target so we have a reasonable expectation that that's the job that we're looking at now if I go back to compliance what I will find is that I have two it says I have two things that are not compliant two checks that are not compliant if I click on the policy here it'll show me that I don't have any message text or it's not compliant with the text that I typed in there and I don't have that message title that I mentioned alright I can even drill down a little further just to make sure that it is indeed this minion we knew it was because that's the only one that's there but while I'm here let's just go ahead and remediate this minion now when I uh, clicked on remediate it started a remediate job and we can go again see that job in progress right here and when this job completes what we're gonna find is that now when I click on this screen we're gonna find that indeed there's gonna be a screen that's gonna pop up that's going to reflect the text and the title that we had put into that remediate job. Again, let's see if it's still running. It's not. That job now has been completed. If we want to just look at the job real quick, we can see what was done. And if we go back over to completed, we'll see that from a salt stack perspective, 
that job was a success. Looking at it from a compliance perspective, if I go back over here now, look at that. That's the um, remediation job and the output of that remediation job, both the text, that's the text that I entered, and the title. So now if I go back over and I run an, ass an ass assessment, everything should come back as being compliant and again we'll just watch that job we'll watch it complete and then we should see that all of our remediation was successful and that we are now in compliance with that uh, check that we did and our job is still running it's almost done probably let's go see if it shows up and completed yet I believe it does no nope, not yet we'll give it just another minute now it's completed and if I go over to compliance and I look at my overall summary I see that indeed I am compliant on that particular VM since it was a target of one and you can see that those two steps are now compliant. So while this was a pretty simple exercise in compliance and remediation, I think it demonstrates the capability that the salt stack integration can bring in terms of allowing you to uh, determine what your compliance uh, stance or your compliance posture is at any one instant in time and then to go and remediate those particular settings that need to be remediated to bring you into compliance 